What's up guys? Welcome back. For those of you that are new, my name is Clay. This is Life by the Bow. We typically do fishing, boating lifestyle videos. However, weather's a little iffy today, so I'm sitting in front of the camera and I'm gonna be giving you guys some beginner fishing tips. I wanna say thanks to Undoes It for supporting the channel and of course sponsoring this week's video. But let's go ahead, let's get right into it. I'm gonna be giving you guys five fishing tips I wish I knew when I first started fishing. So tip number one, guys, do not, do not, do not buy inexpensive tackle. And this is something that may be very tempting to all of us, just because between the fuel, the ice, the bait, the tackle, things get really expensive really quick. And you're gonna be caught in that situation where you're looking at the shelf and there's a $10 spool, and then there's a $30 spool of leader. And you're gonna think to yourself, well, they're both 30 pound tests. This is just an example. They're both 25 yards. I'm just gonna go with the cheaper option, but there is a reason why. It's not going to have the same breaking strength as the expensive tackle. Also, just because it says 30 pound test or 40 pound test, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's exactly what it is. I've had these trials and tribulations for myself. I've used the cheap stuff. I've broken off countless fish. I've made mistakes going as far as places to the Bahamas and just breaking off every single fish that I hooked just because I bought the cheap stuff. And it's not necessarily what I wanted to do. I was in a situation where I couldn't get the expensive stuff. I was dealing with COVID back orders and unfortunately all I could buy was the cheap leaders. So if you're ever in that situation, pay the extra money, pay for the expensive stuff because it's the difference between making the day or completely ruining the day. Another great example is hooks. Cheap hooks don't stand up the same way as expensive hooks do. Cheap hooks, they're gonna straighten out, they're gonna break, and they're just simply not going to hold up the same way as an expensive hook would. And like I mentioned, this is the difference between catching a fish or not. So go ahead, spend the extra money on the expensive tackle. I can promise you it's gonna hold up that much better and ultimately it's going to be the difference between a successful day of fishing and a bad day of fishing if you have a fish on the line that really is going to stand the test to your tackle. Number two guys, learn how to catch live bait or acquire live bait. The reason why is just because here in the upper keys, throughout all of the keys really in South Florida, these fish are pressured very heavily. So nine times out of 10, these fish are gonna eat a live bait before they eat a dead bait. So this is something that really made a huge difference for me. I personally like to catch my own bait versus buying it just because if you rely on buying bait, there may be a lot of times where that bait may not be available. However, we have a lot of bait spots here in the Keys and you'll notice sometimes you'll go to those spots and those baits simply won't be there, whereas other times they will. So that's why it's important to have a lot of bait spots. And there's days, rather than going fishing, we'll just look for new bait spots or we'll try to dial in our bait spots, make sure that those baits are there so that way when it comes time to the day of fishing, we can go to those spots and we know that we are confident that that's where the baits are going to be. So that way we can have the best day of fishing possible and really maximize our time. And you may think to yourself, well, how do I catch live bait? That's why it's important to watch our channel. We're always giving tips and tricks based on cast nets, the hoop nets, and I can promise you if you go throughout our entire library, you guys should have a pretty good understanding based on how to use these things. And that's the fun of what we do. However, another great thing about catching your own live bait is you're gonna save money. Before we move on to the next tip, real quick, I wanna to talk to you guys about Undoes It's All-in-One Cleaner. And this is a cleaner that was developed for the professional space that eliminates the use for a lot of different cleaning products just because there's so much packed into this bottle. Now, it's very simple. You just spray it on, let it sit for 20 to 30 seconds, and after that, you just remove with a cloth or a sponge or whatever you like to clean with. What I like is it's tough enough to cut through grease and grime, but it doesn't leave behind a slick or soapy residue. But something that I appreciate about Undoes It and why I'm happy to endorse them on this channel is they make true marine biodegradable products. Now the reason why that's so important to us here on Life by the Bow, simply just because we live here on the water. 
So whether we're cleaning our boats at the dock or we're cleaning them on land, ultimately whatever we use as a cleaning product is going to run off here back into the ocean. But let's go ahead, let's get right back into tip number three. Every unsuccessful day is a successful day. And you may be thinking to yourself, how does that make any sense? Well, let me explain. Just because you put together this plan and it doesn't necessarily go the way you want it to go, doesn't mean that that day was unsuccessful. And the reason why I say that is just because there's a reason why they call fishing fishing and they don't call it catching. We'll go out multiple days in a row and we will not catch our targeted species, especially when you get onto the level of sport fishing when it comes to fish like tarpon and sailfish, swordfish, sometimes even mahi. And that's just the nature of the game. That's just the way that it goes. But the reason why the day is not unsuccessful is just because we learn from our unsuccessful days. We pay attention to detail and we look for ways to get better and we look for ways to fine tune our day of fishing for the next time we go out in order to avoid the things or the factors that we were dealt with. Therefore, wind direction is gonna make a difference. Current's gonna make a difference. Sometimes sunny skies versus overcast skies will make a difference. Conditions always make a difference. Time of year always makes a difference when it comes to fishing. So, there's nobody that's cracked the code. However, there's a lot of great fishermen out there and a lot of them that are a lot better than me, but even they have bad days. Everybody has a bad day. So if you have an unsuccessful day, figure out why it was unsuccessful, but ultimately don't forget why you're out there in the first place. Tip number four, be comfortable and dress the part. Now you may think to yourself, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna wear my gas station sunglasses, I'm gonna wear a t-shirt, you know, a pair of shorts, and I'm gonna be good to go. You may be good to go after the first one, two, three, four, five trips, but over time, if you're really taking it seriously and you're spending a lot of time out there on the water, you do wanna dress the part and you wanna make sure you're wearing the things out there that are going to keep you in the game the most comfortable. First things first, Polarized sunglasses. Polarized sunglasses are extremely important because they're gonna cut down the glare on the water and it's going to allow you to see things in the water and around the water that much better. Especially our 39 Contender, the boat has a white deck. Not necessarily the best thing for fishing because a lot of that white reflects light back into our eyes. And that's where having a good pair of polarized sunglasses is very important. So you can just see as much as possible and you can use your sight as effectively as possible. Next thing, get a good hat, a good comfortable hat. You wanna keep the sun out of your face. That's also going to cut down glare and that's going to help you see what's going on out there on the water. Another thing to mention, foul weather gear. When it starts raining or you start getting hit with salt spray, you want a good rain jacket, you want a good pair of overalls to keep you comfortable, keep you dry, and that is the difference between a good day and a bad day when things get nasty out there. However, when it gets hot, you want a comfortable shirt. Now, I'm not trying to sell you on our brand specifically. Of course, we're gonna tell you to check out our Performance Shirts Avail gear. It's a very light material, it's a stretchy material, so that way you can move around as best as possible. You know, we have mesh in all the areas prone to sweat, and this is a shirt that's truly going to keep you cool. But at the same time, there's a lot of other brands out there that are offering something similar to what we're offering. However, of course, we're going to be biased towards our clothing. When you really wanna take fishing serious, it is a performance sport. A good day is based on how you perform. Some days it could be based off of luck, but for the most part, hardcore fishing can be very difficult. And if you're not able to perform, you may not be able to catch a fish. Tip number five, last but not least, but of course, one of my favorites, and that's taking pictures and videos. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, how does that make sense? Well, a lot of the times what I do is I'll look at pictures and videos to help me remember a successful day. Remember earlier when we were talking about an unsuccessful day is always a successful day. Well, you can use pictures and videos from a successful day in order to remember those conditions and those certain factors that you were dealt with in order to replicate another successful day. 
So for example, if I wanna go out and I wanna go fishing for something, I'm gonna scroll through my phone and I wanna see what I was catching a year ago. And by looking at those pictures and by looking at those videos, it's going to help me to remember all the factors and all the conditions that I was dealt with that day in order to try to make that day successful just like that day a year ago per se. Another thing that is great is social media. I use social media a lot just because if I'm scrolling through social media and I see a huge correlation, there's a lot of people catching sailfish, I'm gonna go sailfish. And if I see a lot of people catching mahi in the summertime, I'm gonna go mahi fishing. And that's how I go fishing. That's how I do things a lot of the times is I'll just look at past pictures. I'll look at past videos to help me remember. And I also use it as an advantage in the moment in order to make a decision based on what to go fishing for that day specifically, just because Pictures and videos will tell you so much about what's going on in the world. That's how we live our life today. Pictures, videos, social media. And believe it or not, if you really pay attention to detail, there's so much that you can learn through a little Instagram story or just a simple Instagram picture or Facebook post. So before I let you guys go, I wanna give you a little bonus tip. And this is a very obvious one, but just pay very close attention to your terminal tackle. Just because you buy a new pair of hooks doesn't mean that you're gonna pull it out of the package and that hook is gonna be razor sharp. A lot of the times I'll throw away brand new hooks just because they're not as sharp as I want them to be. Or just pay attention to your knots. Just make sure that your knots are holding up perfect after a couple casts. Make sure that your leaders aren't kinked. Make sure your leaders aren't chafed. Always just make sure everything is as sharp as possible, as fresh as possible on your rod and reel because this is the difference between catching a fish of a lifetime or not. But I just wanted to send you guys off with that. Don't forget, Undoes It products down in the video description below. But until next week, we will see you guys. Thank you so much for watching another video here on Life by the Bow.